Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. For years, human rights groups have attempted to file a lawsuit against former Bush administration officials for their role in crafting policies that led to torture in Iraq. Well, on Monday, in a move that shocked some in the legal community, a federal appeals court refused to dismiss a lawsuit against former Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld and unnamed others for developing, authorizing and using harsh interrogation techniques against prisoners in Iraq. The details of the case may surprise you. The lawsuit was filed not by a former prisoner at Abu Ghraib or Guantanamo, but by two American citizens who were employed in Iraq by the private U.S. government contractor Shield Group Security in 2006. Donald Vance and Nathan Erto say their lives took a shocking turn after they witnessed the sale of U.S. government weapons to Iraqi rebel groups for money and alcohol. First, they became FBI informants and collaborated with an investigation into their employer. But then the company revoked the men's credentials for entering Iraq's so-called green zone, effectively barring them from the safest part of the country. Shortly thereafter, they were arrested and detained by U.S. troops. The men were moved to Camp Cropper, subjected to physical and psychological torture, they say, at the hands of U.S. forces. Vance was held for three months, or tell for six weeks. The two men were subjected to extreme sleep deprivation, interrogated for hours at a time, kept in a very cold old cell, denied food and water for long periods. They were eventually released, never charged with a crime. Well, Donald Vance joins us now from Chicago to talk about his ordeal and the case he's filed against Donald Rumsfeld that can now move forward after Monday's federal court ruling. And we're joined in Washington by Andre Prasow. She's senior counsel in terrorism and counterterrorism program at Human Rights Watch. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Um, let us begin with Donald Vance. Tell us, when did you go to Iraq? You were an Army veteran already? Uh, I was a Navy veteran, yes. So when were you in Iraq? Um, I had began uh, contracting in, in uh, Iraq in um, uh, mid-2003. And tell us who you were working for and how long you were there before you were arrested. Uh, in my early years of contracting, I was working, actually working for uh, several American companies. Um, I began working for an Iraqi-owned uh, uh, company in um, uh, 2005. Um, were upon my uh, my initial few months of working for this company, started to notice some pretty frightening and alarming illegal activity. What did you notice? Um, it ranged from uh, bribery, um, theft, um, w weapons dealing. Um, I, I, it was a, it was a gamut of of uh, illegal activities. So, what did you do about it? Um, in 2005, late 2005, I approached my, uh, my uh, Chicago branch of the uh, FBI on a uh, return home, and I began to explain to the FBI what I was seeing and what I was experiencing. Um, they, of course, took an immediate interest, um, asked me to become an uh, unpaid informant, and, and I agreed. And so you went back to Iraq, and how did you communicate with the FBI, and what did you tell them? Um, I stayed in almost daily contact with the FBI via phone, uh, satellite phone, um, uh, email. Um, we, we had set up a mechanism where we were able to relay information to each other. Um, I would say, yeah, I was, I was pretty much in a daily contact with the FBI in Chicago. And so what then happened to you in 2006? Um, in April of 2006, we're, we're, the information that we're getting, we're still not exactly sure what happened, but essentially our cover was blown. Myself, my, uh, my cover and Nathan Ertel's cover had been blown. Um, and uh, the company tried to ensure that we wouldn't be able to tell our story and um, uh, try to kill us. How did they try to kill you? Well, First, they were going to attempt to have us kidnapped, uh, where we would just, of course, just disappear and ultimately meet our deaths. Um, but of course, that was not able. To, they were not able to uh, to do that. Um, a U.S. military special forces team uh, secured our rescue in Baghdad. Uh, as I said, this was April of 2006. Um, upon our rescue, 
uh, we were taken to the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, Iraq, and uh, we began to explain uh, who we were and, and basically our background story uh, to uh, officials in Baghdad. And uh, when they start to be, when they began to realize that um, we were informants to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, um, the tempo um, quickly changed to a hostile one. And so, talk about who arrested you first. What happened to you, Intertel? Um, within 24 hours of um, our rescue, we were turned over to the U.S. military. The U.S. military. Um, sent us to a sort of temporary um, detention facility in uh, Baghdad, in the, uh, the international zone. Uh, we were there for a number of days, uh, where we were then transported to um, Camp Cropper, which is just outside of the Baghdad International Airport. And um, that's where I was detained for 97 days. And what happened to you there, Donald Vance? Um, during my detainment, um, Myself and uh, Nathan Ertel, um, we endured the uh, authorized enhanced uh, interrogation techniques that the military currently employs. Um, it ranges from uh, sleep deprivation, food manipulation, sensory deprivation, sensory overload, um, a technique called walling. Um, and uh, all of their questions surrounded on uh, subtopics like uh, what did you tell the FBI? How long have you been doing this? Um, why did you do this? And of course, I answered all of their questions, but uh, I was not seeing any end to my detention. Donald, who was questioning you? Who was doing this to you? We we don't know who these the, the actual interrogators were. Um, any given day, um, you were po I was possibly interrogated by a, a person in a military style uniform. Um, the very next day, or maybe even later that day, I was interrogated by someone in, uh, in uh, wearing a civilian attire. Um, they never identify themselves. They never identify an agency, a rank. You don't see a, they don't show you a identification. Were they American? Um, to the best of my knowledge, I, I'm not going to speculate on their nationalities, but um, you said you were sub yes. subjected to walling. What is walling? Walling is is basically where um, they place your heels to the back of a wall, and you're basically just slammed repeatedly in a wall into the into the wall. Um, frequ there, frequently, on my uh, way to an interrogation, um, I'm hooded, um, and um, I have earmuffs placed over my ears, so I can't see or hear anything. And you've, I've got a guard on each side of my right or left, and I'm being walked um, to my interrogation. And you're basically just walked repeatedly into a wall um, before you enter the interrogation room, where then you're sat down and your interrogation begins. When were you finally released? Um, I was released um, in uh, August of uh, 06. Um, suddenly, one day, um, guard comes to my cell tells me, hands me a set of civilian clothing, tells me to get dressed. Um, I'm led to a, another interrogation room, but this one, of course, is different because now I'm wearing civilian clothing. Um, and I'm given a sort of a questionnaire. Um, when you get home, what are your intentions? Are you going to write a book? You know, they kind of made a little joking comment if I was going to write a book, if I was going to see, speak to an attorney, the press, anything like this. And of course, um, I'm saying no to all of their questions, all, the, all of these types of questions. And I'm put into a black SUV and driven to Baghdad International Airport. The door opens. I'm handed a plane ticket and my passport, and they drive away. Donald Vance, you've just described an incredible story um, of what took place in 2006. And now you filed suit against Donald Rumsfeld, the former Secretary of Defense. Why Donald Rumsfeld? Well, at this time, we're only able to um, uh, identify Donald Rumsfeld because of, you know, of course, his position at the time. Um, we were not able to identify the actual interrogators, because, as I said, um, we're being interrogated in what they call a sterilized environment. Uh, there's no names, ranks, or insignias of the people that are interrogating you. 
So um, until a, a court is able to um, um, give us discovery to find out who these people are, um, currently Donald Rumsfeld is our only named um, defendant. We're going to break, then come back. Donald Vance is a Navy veteran, a former military contractor, now turned whistleblower, detained at the U.S. military base Camp Cropper for more than three months, now is suing Donald Rumsfeld, um, who was.